don't have my camera up. <laughs> there it is. Domination Nation. What up? It's me. That's right, you. Back on Dominations. Coming to you on the Doom Raider channel. Thank you for watching. Today's episode, we're going to go into reviewing the uh, recent update. Talking about 5.1 Let It Snow. Gifts of Peace update. Uh, it snowed in Dominations. Winter gift appeared outside the outskirts of your base. Blah, 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 blah. We already covered that in the recent video. Uh, this video, we're going to talk about how things have actually worked. Is it working good? Is it working bad? Blah, blah, blah. Showing a new layout. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's a very familiar layout. It's my favorite layout. Just with a couple changes, you may already notice the city center and uh, Forbidden City, that type of stuff, is no longer protected. My loot is protected. All it is is a couple small adjustments that you make on the base. And uh, we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. We also want to show I get attacked by a 140 something flamethrower army, which is pretty sweet. Uh, because I win, but it also looks cool to watch that many flamethrowers at once. So, thanks for joining me. Uh, recently on the update, snow fell down, everything's covered in snow, looks cool. Uh, the trees even turn into Christmas trees with lights and stuff, which I've harvested all mine, but um, even little snowmen I saw underneath one of the trees. So anyways, the uh, big things on the updates, if you're atomic, you have a bigger alliance gate, command post, more mills and uh, markets. So that's good news for you if you're atomic, more stuff to buy, blah, blah, blah. Good news for everyone else in global. If you attack atomic age troops, they have more stuff, more storage for more <laughs> loot to take. So... We do like that. Um, they did uh, adjust a couple other things. I want to mention um, the wall sappers. Pretty sweet. When I'll show a replay of an attack where uh, basically I use my wall sappers. Uh, this guy here with 3,000 oil. Um, that was the reason I selected this target, but uh, he had a little bit extra oil. So we came in on the oil side, which is a long walk for those... Uh, for those um, wall sappers, the engineers or whatever. But I'll take you through their journey real quickly and we'll go right back in. So the wall sapper now does damage to more than just one wall. Uh, he blows up any adjacent walls as well. Now the first one he, I see here, it looks like he blows up like four walls. Um, I'm not really sure how that works, but there it goes, four walls. And then another section here, boom. Four walls, but in a different way. I don't really understand. Point is, there's a uh, bigger hole that you pop with those wall sappers. And um, that's big because you don't have to rally your uh, wall sappers to a certain location as much. You also don't have to... Uh, uh, you can also go right through these double sections. See this double row of walls there? That's no longer a threat for me. I can take one sapper and go through both of those rows. So people are going to have to redesign bases stuff like that uh, and I've never really used that strategy anyways but it was kind of frustrating to have to use more than one wall sapper on a guy um, that had the double double layered walls so that's kind of cool we got that ad additional uh, benefit there also attack helicopters on defense now do splash damage I believe they probably do it on offense as well probably won't find that feature very helpful or very often uh, on offense but on defense if troops are grouped up there's a one cell splash damage radius. So anybody that's grouped up into one area is going to get whacked with that uh, helicopter whacked right off. <laughs> so we'll look for that. Uh, I don't have those. I can request them and maybe find a defensive replay and show, share that later. But that's kind of neat. Uh, let me see what else i got to stand up for this. Um, actually, I can just scroll. scrolly oly on this guy here. Oodle -doodle -doodle -doodle. Whoops, too far. Oh, oh, scroll. Just disastrous. Upgrade the Alliance Gate, blah, blah, blah. Wall Sappers, attack helicopters. Fighters in the Expedition Sepoy can now damage attack helicopters. Expedition Blessing now provide better bonuses when obtained from higher level expeditions. That was the point all along with that um, to you know raise your dock level so you can get better rewards. So I'm glad that they leveled that out. That's the way it should have been. Um, there was a couple other things. The new leader, I'll talk more about him next. Uh, but the walls, they made it to where you could buy walls with food, which was awesome. It lasted for like one hour until they realized uh, you could buy walls with food on credit, I guess, if you will. So once you purchased, uh, let's say I wanted to buy this wall for three, uh, three million. I don't have enough three million chicken right now to buy it. But 
didn't matter. You could buy it anyways, and you can go negative. Um, so you could go as far as you wanted negative, actually. Have a member on our team that uh, I think got 157 million negative in food or chicken, however you want to say it. And <laughs> he uh, was basically stuck to where he couldn't train any troops, use food at all. I know that's what they get for doing that, but he ended up, uh, they freed up his account, put the food balance back to zero or 100 K or something like that. Don't really remember exactly what it was, but he ended up getting a bunch of walls for free, pretty much. <laughs> uh, I would like them to turn that back on, though, so we can all use that. We don't have to uh, just sit around with a giant pile of food anymore. I uh, just recently spent a lot of money um, in the library doing different researches. Uh, what are we on now? Increasing the economic wonders of pre atomic age wonders. The reason I'm doing that is so I can get to the defensive wonders, which is next. Um, and that's what I'm wanting in that in that book there. But uh, anyway, so the walls. Hopefully they bring that back where you can buy it with food. But it broke and they had to they have to fix it. Big surprise. Uh, anyways, university though there is a new leader to look at. Uh, Chief H, Chief Hiawatha, however you want to say that. Chief uh, H, Mr. H. He's very helpful um, with one category in my opinion which is uh, this one right here, food skill research time. If you go down here to th the third level, or the third row, I should say, um, they're all, there's a level two is the very end, but they're all level one. Um, you'll see another food skill research time discount. And uh, the reason this is the best is, altogether there's 10, 10 skills that you can earn on that, and uh, a total of 30% discount on research time. And 30% when you're dealing with Upgrades that take 12 days. I don't want to do the math. Uh, a third of that, 40. So it would take uh, eight days instead. I mean, four days off, that's a big discount. Um, and that's really putting your citizens back to work. And uh, so go for that one. Of course, walls and gate upgrade cost is helpful. It's only 1% per skill. So you're maxing out a 10% discount, which on a $3 million wall is 300,000. Not that much of a discount considering you can get that in one attack. Um, whereas opposed to the, so as far as priority, I would do food skill research time first, and then the wall and gate upgrade cost. All these take less citizens and less time than normal researches. So uh, it's great to do. I do see coming soon, uh, this guy, future leader, he looks like uh, maybe a Sumerian or an Egyptian, not really sure there with the camels and stuff, but um, anyways, <laughs> the, uh, the guy is probably gonna be a gold discount just like uh, Hiawatha is a food discount. At least I'm hoping that's the case because uh, that helps out a lot on the research times in the university. So another tip why, while I'm talking about that is you only have to search research one skill to move down to the next column. So whenever I wanted to get this food skill research going, all I had to do was one of each. And uh, basically now I just go back and forth between those two and the max it takes is this one which is 18 hours as opposed to like you know, 10 days or whatever it gets on the other ones. It gets pretty long. Um, so that's what I recommend there with Chief H. And uh, overall, the new update's going well. I think there's been less crashes on my alliance in general. Have been noticing some performance lag, some slower uh, troop movement on some bases. And I'm sure a lot of people have talked about that. Don't really know the cause of that. It may just be server lag. I don't really know the details on what makes it do that. But I have a feeling it's a performance issue on Nexon's side. So... With that being said, that kind of covers all the uh, update stuff that we just had. While I've been talking about it, you've been looking at this base, um, which is my main base, just with some alterations. So let's take a look at my main base. I like to chase metals and loot. Some people don't. Most people don't. A lot of people don't, I should say, care about the, uh, the metals as much, which is fine. If it slows you down in your upgrades to go for metals, then don't go for metals. If it doesn't, then you might as well get the medals too because it's fun and it gives you something else to do. Now basically all I did, and you can do this on any of my layouts, any of my previous layouts, is you just come in, you pick up whatever's in the middle, which is always my city center or my forbidden city or whatever, and uh, you just take it and you get it out of there. And you move a couple things out of the way and you just drop that turret up there. Um, obviously you want to protect your, uh, uh, your fort and, you know, you want your oil in the middle so there's a lot of things I also recommend only doing one gold and one uh, food in there you don't want all your gold and food in the center compartment so I wouldn't take out anything else 
We'll just leave that stuff where it is. Then I would move the garrisons out and put the uh, put the storages in. So we'll take it out, move it in. Basically, you can see where I'm going with this. Another trick to changing from the previous layout to this one is that you do have to uh, move your factory over to allow space for roads to route through there. Don't need all these roads to go real deep in there. I believe that <clears throat> we can compare real quick. We'll activate this one road network wise. This is the original layout I said, 580. Uh, pretty good, not the greatest ever, but a pretty good one. This is the uh, modified layout for people that want to expose the town center and protect their loot more, the lower metal guys. Uh, it has a road network of 510. So it's still pretty good, um, which just means more time for them to have to shoot at your city center, more time for these guys to spawn more troops, preventing them from moving in on your loots. I did run this base one time on defense. Of course, at my level, anybody sees an exposed in Empire League and Exposed City Center, they're just going to pick it off real fast. Probably not even going to try to hit the loot, which is fine. I like to keep the medals and the loot, though. So I really prefer the other way. Um, but uh, I just like the challenge, I guess you could say. But there's a lot of reasons why to do it this way. And here's an example of what, of what you do. Um, I would just say the main thing is you take out the City Center, move in your food, gold, your castle, fort, whatever you have. Uh, kind of disperse them around inside the wall area and then move out something that's not as valuable like a garrison don't move out a mortar or a market or a uh, or a tank depot or a cannon um, don't move those out to the edges you know just move something out like the garrison uh, or the readouts maybe I chose the garrison because it was right in front of my mortars I like this layout I may in fact run this just to see how it goes I don't really know I used to do exposed town centers all the time. I've just kind of changed away from it. Anyways, enough about that. That's how you do this one. And in many of my other layouts, I will probably do some more. If you look back through my other uh, builds in the very beginning, I did some uh, loot saver bases, I think is one of them. So you may want to look at that one if you're looking for another uh, example. I'll try to focus on that more in the future, though. Thank you for commenting. I don't know the exact name of the guy. Uh, but suggested that I show more of these types of layouts, which is probably I probably should I just assume that everybody's gonna just change it on their own, but it's not as easy um, as I make it seem sometimes so There is that uh, What else anything else important about this? Uh, these changes I made oh Yeah, um, I have the cannons here to show where they should be on this layout whenever I'm actually doing it what I'm doing is uh, when I run this base, I remove that and put in something that's actually working. <laughs> so whenever you have something upgrading, I recommend going in and modifying your layout, changing it to where um, you know you're not wasting uh, a building. So instead, why not have a an archer tower inside of the walls instead of your broken cannon? So that's what I've been doing to uh, offset the. Um, and you should too whenever you have a building being upgraded don't leave it in the middle take it out put something else in there and then when it's done put it back uh, makes more sense that way and it still forces them to have to attack it with their tanks so it works out great this way I'll probably leave it like this we'll go ahead and activate it um, rock this base for a little while and uh, see how it goes so anyways that's enough of that let's get to the uh, replay of the flamethrowers this is pretty epic I did get a defensive win on this one. Whoops, 19 medals makes up for the guy right above it. <laughs> uh, but let's give a replay a watch here. This guy uses uh, I didn't see how many 140 something flamethrowers, which is pretty awesome. It's fun to watch. Hopefully there won't be too much lag. Comes in from the east side, just like Snoop Dogg, <laughs> and uh, takes out my forest defenders. What a turd! This guy does make the fatal mistake of missing the Hidden Forbidden. And it's understandable why this does not look like a Forbidden City style base. This looks like a regular base that doesn't have that. But you gotta take a look down there every now and then to see that. So here's the massive flamethrower army. I think he's got a couple of heal carts in there as well. And he's basically breaking my game with all the flames going everywhere. So it's kind of hard to watch, but uh, pretty neat though. He's doing some pretty good damage. The only problem is <clears throat> my uh, 
mortar set up here when he decides to rally on that mortar he does it because he thinks he's, he's gonna get the city center and have the round be over which is fine that's cool but uh, he doesn't realize that he needed to save a couple of troops for that forbidden city down south he does hit that pops it with the diamond then my uh, artillery is there to blow him up along with my three uh, mortars in range there which he's just rage using rage tactics um, dropping and wasting food left and right on those sabotages uh, but maybe he has food he doesn't worry about how many tactics he uses <clears throat> he's probably freaking out thinking oh my god I gotta get down there and get to those uh, get to that forbidden city but oh well too late Ten nine eight seven six five four three two. he's done um, so kinda cool to see that just another victory 19 medals uh, like I said, it just offsets the guy after him that took 18 medals for me. But that's how things go in Empire League for me, uh, right now at least. Okay, we do have an army. Let's take a look at the composition train. I'm kind of doing a little bit of everything right now. It allows me to donate whatever somebody's requesting. And also, I don't have to rely on my uh, don't donated troops to attack with. So... Um, working for me for right now I don't want to make this video too long so I'll kind of end on a alliance talk real quick um, San Fran Tokyo we have three alliances well three of them three groups it's all one alliance really uh, but this alliance is our higher level guys we do not stack our team with any lower uh, level guys our lowest level guys like 110 or 101 or something like that I don't even know um, but you can see there's no uh, turds sitting around with their you know Iron Age bases to help modify our war matchups. We don't do that. <clears throat> Not around here. In fact, we also take pride in getting some medals too. So getting medals, getting loot, it's all good here in San Fran, Tokyo. The main thing is though, we treat everybody with respect and we have fun. Uh, we don't freak out about wars. Uh, we don't, we love playing in the wars. We typically win our wars. We're getting better uh, at the wars. You know, it's harder to win some of the wars when you're against stacked teams, but that's okay. It's part of it until they uh, get rid of that. I don't know how they're going to do that, but no big deal. Um, anyways, yeah, so if you're Alliance, you ever feel like there's not enough people online, you're the only one donating, uh, there's not enough participation in wars, stuff like that, um, we have plenty of space for you no matter what level you are. Just type in San Fran, <coughs> San Fran Tokyo. <laughs> in the uh, Alliance search box and you'll find us. Here's a look at the uh, current war. I still have both of my attacks which I will probably get 10 stars with those. Don't know if there'll be new stars but we'll be waxing some fools in war soon. Um, but you can see just good participation. People that don't attack in wars we typically don't include them in the next one and they usually don't last too long in our alliances. Uh, you don't have to be in our in our wars though so if you have an alliance that's forcing you to be in wars all the time just bail on them dude come to where it's fun uh, you can see my base did well it took their level three to get uh, 100 percent on me and uh, he still couldn't get five stars their level their number five guy he 31 percented me i'm ranked sixth on the team so my defense is obviously working pretty well i like the looks of that i'm probably going to smack them up a little bit uh, but anyways, just wanted to uh, promote our base, our alliance, San Fran, Tokyo. I'll pull it up one more time so you can see the spelling um, right there at the top. And uh, we have another alliance. You even have San Fran, Tokyo 3 uh, for even lower levels or whatever. Maybe you have an alt account that you're not on as much. You can bring your alt account to San Fran, Tokyo. So uh, at least you know you're going to have fun with us and, you know, be respected and not treated like a turd. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough talk about San Fran, Tokyo. Um, so join us. That's it. That's it. I uh, want to also promote quickly <laughs> another uh, game, which is kind of weird, but I'll throw it in on the end. Clash Clan, Clash Royale. Uh, you can see all my computer stuff going on here. I don't really care. Put this up in the background. So you can read the forms in the background. Well, <laughs> while we uh, do a little Clash Royale promotion... Basically, I just started this alliance. Um, San Fran, Tokyo. Here is the uh, info clan tag. You can see it's pound 20 JCL 8 YC. There's a couple San Fran, Tokyo's out there. So if you use the clan tag, uh, you'll find us a little bit easier. 
we're just doing this for fun. I have a pretty high level guy. Um, so I have lots of uh, cards to donate, stuff like that. You can see just overflowing cards everywhere. Um, so join me if you play that game too. We'll build a fun uh, clan of guys having fun on that game. And I'll probably do some more videos on that later. But um, that's all the cross promotional uh, stuff I wanted to do today. Thanks for watching. Please comment. That's where the idea for this video of the uh, exposed town centers, the different layout with the loop protection came from, was from a comment on a recent video. So I really appreciate it. Remember to subscribe. Tell your friends in your alliance. Just search Doom Raider. Doom Raider. Like Tomb Raider. But I don't raid tombs. I raid dooms. Whatever the hell that means. It just sounds cool. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Peace out, F10. Hit the microphone. I'm done.